Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 111. This episode of the Self-Publishing Podcast is brought to you by 99designs, the online marketplace that helps you get outstanding book cover designs at an affordable price. Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, sometimes known as the Shill, the Nose, and the Yeti, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant. I guess I'm the Shill. Today, Dave will be playing the nose. Uh, they be all of the nose because Sean is clearly the Yeti today. <laughs> awesome. Sean has a fiction unboxed beard. He has beard unboxed. I'm going to register beardunboxed.com before Carl Sinclair. <laughs> well, you know, C- Carl. Carl just tempted me with all that that bearding talk. So. Um, yeah, this is the most hair I've had on my face. Okay. Sean was like, I, well, "You want to see a beard, motherfucker?" <laughs> No, it's really actually patchy, but um, yeah, I thought it would be cool, but I actually really want it off my face now, so um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited for two weeks from now. What is wait, wait, how long has it been now? since you shaved? Um, what's the date? The 14th? The 14th? 13th. 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 So 13 days. I expected more out of you. I'm disappointed. I, I thought <laughs> you get dark really quick, but then you take a while to, for the bush to come out. So. Yeah, see, it's really thin right in here, actually. Uh, you're not a real man. I know. I never gonna claimed be a, to be, though. There's going to be a schism now in the uh, collective inkwell because Dave no longer has any beard related respect for Sean. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. He's lost plenty of other related respects. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what do we got today? We got Chris Garrett coming on to talk about author platform. I mean, is that because I, I wrote author platform when I created the Hangout, but I'm like, well, he's he's an author, um, but he he he's more like an, a, a specialist on platform in general. Like Chris Garrett yeah, is. Think, yeah. Right. Right. I, I don't think he can speak to author platform so much as platform in general, and then we gear it towards the audience about what authors are going to want, because that is a really, really big question, and I think it's a space where we can actually um, do a lot. We, we can have a, an influence and do good things because we understand the blogging platform, but we've never really been able to alchemize it to our fiction in the way we want to. And I think with some of the things that we're putting into play right now, we will be able to do that, and that'll be a, you know, a, a positive example to follow, I think. Because all this year, we've wanted to do better with blogging. Like That was a really big thing that we came to the table with um, this year, and we haven't done a very good job at it consist- consistently. We've done a few things very well, um, but I think our results have suffered because we haven't been consistent, we haven't had a plan, and it's very difficult to do it the way it needs to be done without the right strategies and follow through. And that's one of the things Chris can talk about because, you know, that's that's what they do. He, uh, he's from Copyblogger, by the way, which is um, a company that all three he's of us... He's one of the have. authors of the ProBlogger book. I mean, right? He Wasn't that the first book you read about online business? It something? is. The, yeah, it's the first book I ever read about anything online was ProBlogger by, uh, by Chris Garrett and Darren Rouse. And that was... I think it was during the time that I'd already sent my uh, my children's work um, into an agent, but I hadn't heard yet. And so, right before I registered the Writer Dad domain, um, you know, which led to meeting oh, Dave, yeah. all of all of that, which is just really really cool chain of events. But yeah, Chris Garrett would have been a voice that I heard from the very very beginning, who essentially his message was: uh, you just need a strong enough voice and and be smart and intelligent in the way you build your business, and you can have an online platform. And that really spoke to me because, you know, I can be loud. So, uh. <laughs> well, and it's stuff that we've used over and over again too. In terms of, uh, we we haven't done things the right way. And and I'm, Sean looked away to take a drink from his Hunger Games cup, so he didn't see me make the air quotes for <laughs> the right way. Um, we we've, we've done things our way, and that that's that's a larger issue of. Uh, that's about voice. That's the same thing as you see in writing is um, your individual personality. Personality, I would say, more than voice. But, but yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that um, there's 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 a ton of author blogs out there. Um, I, I mean, and I've 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 looked a lot recently too because I'm I'm curious to see what other authors are doing. I'm curious to see how they're um, highlighting their work and how they're communicating with their audience and what they're doing to um, to, to get to get readers onto their list and um, I can't just people. you kidnap people and is that was get that on the my list to make them read <laughs> um, I made a Dave's, and it's uh, basement reference recently <laughs> in uh, one of the fiction and, box blog posts what uh what what I don't see a lot of is um, is authors who who really understand that conversion element. Um, so their sites act more like um, a portfolio or a business card rather than anything where there's a mechanism to to draw them in and then and then nurture that relationship on the site um, and then move them into a deeper paid relationship. And um, copy blogger. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you you want to have some readers who want to buy all your books. Like you uh, want. I was just right? thinking of a prostitution joke. A prostitution. Oh, 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 Come on, get on board, <laughs> Um, and so that's kind of copy blogger specialty. And what attracted me um, to, I mean, both Johnny and I have done a lot of of writing for copy blogger. Uh, Dave and I have written a couple of things together. Um, but their their whole message attracted me very early on. I'm my first month online, I'd say. Um, which is you have to treat your blogging, if you want blogging to be successful, you have to treat it like a business. And I love the whole element of copy blogging. Like blog, but treat it like copywriting because copywriting has certain rules and you know there those rules exist to uh, encourage certain behaviors. And so I, I always really like that message and I feel like as a company, they really hit that sweet spot between... Um, Really helping you to bond with a reader and uh, and foster a good relationship, but also that next step, which is conversion. How do you get them from the page onto a list, and then from a list into you know either buying for nonfiction authors out there, you know you could have training courses or something like that. Uh, for fiction authors, it's just getting them really excited about the next thing that you're going to write. But all of those conversion elements are stuff that that Chris can talk about with us today. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to having Chris on. Chris is also just a really, really awesome guy. He's really smart and he's really nice, and um, he's been great in Fiction Unboxed. He's been, he's been like like enthusiastic. Like he's been like uh, he's, he's he's doing some writing. He's doing some fiction, and it's kind of neat to see somebody that we've uh, we've looked up to as a uh, I, I guess a mentor of sorts. Like he he's a real authority to see like oh he's learning from us, and that's that's pretty cool. And so he's been great with that. Um, yeah, if you've had um, <clears throat> if you've had bug questions or anything in the forums, you've you probably already met Chris because he's he's been really helpful about answering all those. And I'll tell people why. I don't um, know that. Oh yeah, okay. So uh, Fiction Unbox is built on something called the Rainmaker platform, um, and as is the site that we're building, kind of behind the scenes right now, it, it, to be our umbrella site at some point. Um, but Fiction Unboxed is it, it does a lot of really really cool things like. Um, uh, we could do direct sales, so everybody who um, backed Kickstarter got a login to the site, but we can also sell it directly on the site, and people just pay either through PayPal or a credit card, um, and they get a login. So the same kind of stuff, but we could do that with full libraries. So a few months ago, we were converting all the sites to... Um, to uh, uh, Gumroad Divi. It was, oh. yeah, to Divi. Yes, the combination was Divi and Gumroad. So Divi was for the site elements, and Gumroad was so that we could sell everything. But the Rainmaker platform, which is uh, developed by Copyblogger, uh, it's built on WordPress, but it does all these really cool things that are basically about all this stuff that we're talking about, which is fostering a community and and um, and and doing direct sales. So. It would be in our interest to have our true fans give them a place to talk to other true fans, um, uh, read the stuff that you're you're writing, have a library that they can access and download whenever they want. Uh, that kind of stuff is just out of the box uh, with Rainmaker. Uh, there's a you know a, a learning curve to it. I've had to kind of figure things out, but again, Chris has been super helpful with all of that. But anyway, it's it's uh, Chris works for Copyblogger, who is the the Rainmaker developers, and so. 
Um, he's in Fiction Unboxed both as um, a consumer, like he wants to check it out. He's writing fiction right now and, and is, is following along with the videos. Um, but he's also been in there as he wants to see what the environment is like so he can tweak and improve. Uh, but all those forums, all that stuff is just, it's because of the Rainmaker platform. I wanted to um, mention two things. Number one, uh, we've gotten a handful of emails from people who are just catching up, and they're like, I missed Fiction Unboxed. Can I still get it? The answer is yes. Um, it's it's just fictionunboxed.com, and you'll see you can you can buy. Um, and I would also recommend, like, I, I, I tell you, I... I I don't mean to be like a broken record about this, the, the fiction unboxed and, and irritate people who aren't in it or whatever, but it's, it's, it's really been an eye-opener, and um, I've been writing these posts. So, so basically each day I write the content and of the book. Like I write, you know, 5,000 words or so, and then I post it. And so you, you see my rough draft progress, and then Sean's a few days behind me with uh, his first draft edit. And each day I've, I've done these, like the first few days I put up words, uh, as opposed to videos. So, so at the beginning it was video, 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 video because we were meeting. And then the first few days I put up words, I was like, oh, I'm excited. And then, you know, and I would explain how I'm excited and this is cool. But then there were a, a few days where I was just like, oh, here, here's your words. You know, like I just finished and I'm like, <laughs> here's your words. Boom, there's the link. And over this week I've had I've had a little bit more time and I've been thinking about and, and it's it's been an interesting like meta process looking at like here's the, the batch I wrote today and here's sort of what I learned so for instance um, if I deviate significantly like I cut a scene out or I expand on a scene or I end a chapter differently I'll be like oh, okay that's why I did that and um, if you if even if you're not involved like if you go over to fictionunbox.com slash free you'll see all of the blog posts like you can actually see them now that the, the words will be hidden the membership words but the actual blog posts in terms of um, looking at the process, you can see sort of, it's just really interesting, I think. Like I had a thing about Sean's daughter in one of them recently that I was, um, I don't know, it just makes me think of things. I don't know where I'm going with that. But that it's been interesting well, in our process. Exactly, that it, it is interesting to see our process. And, um, and, and it's been exciting to have the door open. Um, and we're both like, okay, we because because we 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 kind of trained for it, right? Like this was this was our, our our time in the ring, and we spent last year kind of um, exercising every day and, and really training for this. And the, the when we first started this, um, that was the hard part. That the first week was the hard part. This week, now I don't want to say it's been easy at all, um, because comparatively it's, though, it's right because it is work, but comparatively. Oh man, has it been a breeze? And I'd even argue that it's some of our most fluid ever. Like the the, the Johnny's words that are coming are are very crisp. Um, and and I think that the world building that we did, considering the uh, the accelerated pace, um, is pretty substantial. And 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 it seems to be really um, blooming through the story. So uh, I'm just I, I I've just loved every element of this. But but that what Johnny's just talking about, which is us kind of exploring our process more, not just for everybody, but for ourselves, right. which just means that we're going to be able to further refine it, um, you know, in, in July. Like our very next project, we will, we will very directly have some significant specific things that we can then apply to the new project. And that's that, very, very exciting. Right. That's what, I, that's what I meant. I didn't mean it's been interesting to explore a process like you're a voyeur, you're watching it, and boy, isn't it interesting to explore. I mean, for us, like, it, it, when you, exp and this is something Sean has said a, a lot about this podcast in general, is when you teach something, you understand it better. So I kind of would urge anybody listening to this to explore, the, like, teach stuff to somebody. You know, somebody wants to know about <laughs> writing fiction, well, here's something I learned. Um, I mean, I, 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 I explained, like, we, we met... Um, Isla's mother, Juliet, and she was cast. The whole concept of casting, people have really embraced. And um, I talked about when we met her, like why she seems kind of cold, and that I wrote her kind of as a Stepford Wives sort of a thing, like to, to suit that. And um, just, I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling on this, but the, the, I guess I'm just saying that each day I learn stuff that I would have just brushed off and said, well, here's my words for the day. But now I'm seeing it. Like wh when I introduce world elements, um, what reasons people have for doing things, I was thinking out 
something that needed to occur, and wh I didn't buy the reason that you'd given me, and so I had to think that out a little bit. And yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go on about it. Yet. Yeah, no, I I understand completely. When I I know I think this weekend I'll be doing the first edit where I'm like doing the the screen flow while I'm doing it. Oh, I and, need to remember to do that. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be weird. Like it's gonna feel odd. And and already now as I'm editing, I'm thinking in my head. Like I'm answering, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that with every edit? And 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 I, I'm going to be excited to get that out of my head in July. Um, but I also like being asked. Like I like having to think about it. Well, why am I doing that? Right? And then um, it's just it's interesting. It's it, it makes you it makes you stop and think a lot more. And I think that's a really cool thing because. Um, we can keep piling layers on the process and, and getting it smarter and smarter, but until we, we have to a start asking more questions, um, you can't really tweak what, what needs fixing, and this makes us ask a lot of questions. Like we, ha we have to look at it because everybody's looking at it. So um, I want to move into some voicemails. Just if you're interested in still getting in on Fiction Unboxed, it's fictiononboxed.com uh, slash unbox is the actual link, but you'll see it. And um, so let's move into voicemails. Um, oh boy, I feel like we would be doing double duty with this one. Uh, Jacob gave us one about shared worlds, but well, you'll see why I said double duty. All right, so here's Jacob's, and we will need to revisit this later, but here we go. This voicemail is brought to you by 99designs. <laughs> Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. A power pack upgrade gets you more. Oh, man, he keeps going. Oh, he's on the clock. Twice as many designs to help you choose. We didn't ask him Again, to do this. That's 99designs.com slash SPP. Now, here's my question. There we go. I'm very curious Why didn't you just... about the shared world you guys will be making and opening up. What What are you blathering on about over there, Sean? <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, why don't you just wait until the midway point to play that? <laughs> because, because, because we can't cop out that hard. We need to answer his question. <laughs> like, what are we going to do? Like, that's, the, that's the ad read? Let's, let's let the 99 Designs people know. Like, hey, we, just, we, didn't even, we, we didn't even phone it in this time. Somebody else literally phoned it in for us. All right, let's All right fair enough. In the near future... I'm curious about your thoughts regarding how an open shared world can be used as a marketing tool in which many authors market their own work and the work of others in the same world. Could this literally multiply your reach and sales potential? I'm also curious about how this affects your creativity. Do you feel limited because others are playing in your sandbox? Or does a shared enthusiasm just fuel your creative juices? That's right, I said juices. <laughs> I really appreciate your thoughts, guys. Love the show as always. Thank you, and over and out. A anybody else want to uh, hire Jacob to do a Fiction Unbox commercial for us? <laughs> it's like a young Christopher Walken. Fantastic. <laughs> um, I don't feel restricted by it at all to answer that question, honestly. it's um, Although I'm going to be really, really curious. We had a piece of fan art done by, oh, man, I wish oh, I... Oh, that was, was so it, it, I want to say Donovan Shearer. Shearer so, sorry, I don't remember it, dude. Um, That's I can, it. Artists I, never get the fucking credit. Well, man. I I actually will find it, but I just I didn't think I was gonna mention that, so I didn't know. But it's fan. We should art. put it on the. We should put it up on an update. Actually, that's really really cool. It's really good. Um, yeah, hold on. If I can if I can find him really quickly, I would put it up. But anyway, my point is that it, it's like um, we we took something and we created something, and we have somebody who created. An, it's John, Donovan. Uh, Scherer, S-C-H-E-R-E-R. -E -E He's right draw, right draw play on Twitter, and he created this um, fantastic piece of, of of fan art showing Isla at the the opening scene in uh, at the the Solstice Festival, and it just made me think like we're gonna have fan uh, we're gonna have fan art we're gonna have fan uh, writing you know like we're gonna we're gonna have people writing in our world, and to to have people doing that is just so it doesn't intimidate me at all. It just it excites me. It makes me say, you know, wow. Um, I don't know how we're going to vet any of the fan writing. It's not like we're going to be able to read it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? There, there. So I know you haven't seen the forums at all, but there was this was a question uh, just Here's, last uh, night. Sorry, I just wanted uh, to show his uh, his art really quick here. Here, did that go up? Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. I think that's really, really, really cool. Uh, anyway, so go ahead. 
Um, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, we were about watching the forums. Free fanfic or something. <laughs> Oh, oh, in the, you know, in the in the forums, yeah, uh, they were asking about the, you know, when is the world going to be delivered? Um, there were two questions. When is the world going to be delivered? Because you know that's one of the rewards. Um, and I figure, you know, after the book, but we want to put all that together and make the little Scrivener template and all of that. But but there's there are people who are excited to start writing, like they want their stuff so that they can get going. Um, and I figure. Um, and that we haven't even talked about this, but I figured we'd probably do like a version 1.0 um, as soon as we can after uh, Blunderbuss wraps, and then um, a 2.0 after the summit in September because a lot more world building will be done there, and we should add to the world. Like here's here's more stuff that's true now. Right, right. Um, yeah, because the, the the summit attendees will actually kind of be that that that's that's quasi canon. Like true canon is ours, but they'll be. As good as canon, basically. Like that'll be right. part of the world for real for the summit people. Right, because we could put elements of that into the world, which we then use when because we'll be mapping out our sequel at the same time. So if those facts become true, uh, but that was the other question. Well, what is canon? What is, is there any way that you could have to if you really really like an idea, we could pitch you as canon? And I'm like, I don't know how we would even filter that. Like, it would always, it would be very difficult. Oh, okay. Well, we'll put that. In, we'll add that to the world doc when there's time. It seems like. Yeah, I, I think we have to mind things. our own stuff. I yeah. think that I think that needs to be a one-way relationship. Um. Anyway, um, I was gonna say something and I forget. Apparently, I'm scattered on some of this stuff. Did you have another <laughs> voicemail? Uh, I do. I can do one. I can do one more voicemail here. So this one will be from Bill. Hi guys, this is uh, Bill Meeks. I uh, two two points of order. Uh, one, uh, you couldn't find the voicemail number on your website anywhere. It has the fiction un unbox stuff up there oh, right now, so oops. I think that was part of the problem. <laughs> Basically, uh, right now I'm about to release the third something book for your list, in John. A series, I a superhero series I'm writing, and I've just got on May 20th. I'll be done with KDP Select for the first book in that. So I, I'm wondering right now whether I should take that full first book perma-free or do something else I was thinking of, which is taking up about the first third of the book. I was thinking about breaking that off into like an origin uh, kind of zero issue and making that free and including maybe uh, the original short story the novel was based on and, uh, you know, maybe a little bit talking about, you know, how I came up with it. But in the making that free and then leading in, and then making the first book 99 cents permanently. See if you thought that was good or if it would be better just to throw it to the wind and make it perma-free uh, permanently. All right, thanks, guys. Love the show, and I can't wait to start checking out the Fiction on Box stuff. D Dave, does that sound familiar to you, that question? Yes, it does. And we answered that on the decoy show, <laughs> along with Garrett's. So any initial thoughts on that, on Bill's question? Um, Sean, I, I think you have to be... Yeah, I think you have to be really careful with with breaking a third of a book that already exists, um, I think it really, really has to stand on its own. And if it doesn't, you're cheating the reader, and they're going to feel it, and it, that's not a good thing. You're better off making the whole thing free. Um, we did that with, um, with uh, Unicorn Genesis. Originally had a, a prelude or an origin, no, we called it. A better example, I think. Right. No, 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 because Genesis is an example of what not to do. We took that mm -hmm. off market because... It was like, you know what, that's just confusing, and like, what's the point to it? Not everything needs a free funnel, right? And, and in, that, in that case, the free is, the very first one of Unicorn Western is still free. But we're, we're just confusing the reader. Uh, Vengeance, which is the, um, the, the prelude to Namaste, is part of that book, but it totally works on its own. You could read that that story and never read anything else, and it, it totally works. It has a, it has a, it has a cool framing device and everything. Uh, so I think that's okay, but I think you really have to think about the work, and if it doesn't stand entirely on its own, I don't think you can just cut it up and say, ha, you want the real stuff? You gotta pay for it, sucker! Because <laughs> the reader's not gonna buy into that, and they won't buy again. They'll resent it. I, uh, You know what? He, what? he did say something, though, that I, I kind of like the idea for, and, and that is, uh, what, what if you took what if you took the beginning uh maybe the first episode or however he has it broken down. What if you put that out in another book, but then add all this other supplemental material? So 
it, it's still out there in its book form, but there's also a free version. Uh, if it has enough uh, bonus value to it to have to have other stuff, uh, if, the the only difficult thing on that is if it's a first book and it's everybody's introduction to the series, how much can you really go into bonus stuff without spoiling stuff that's later on? That would be my concern. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like it would it would almost by design be kind of thin. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I would worry about confusion. Honestly, yeah. I, I wouldn't worry about um, you get more if you pay more. I would worry more about, well, wait, it's over here. It's this version. Right now, um, on, I've just been putting some of our stuff on uh, up on Apple, and the Namaste, because originally what became Vengeance that Sean just mentioned was originally Namaste Episode 1. It had the cover that is currently on Namaste of the back of the monk with the flaming sword, and it was called so Namaste. Confusing. And... Apple, we, we were doing it through Smashwords, and Smashwords has not updated Apple. Like, still, it still hasn't done it. And so it's still called Namaste Episode 1 with the monk, with the sword. It's free, and then there's Namaste. Now, Apple is the only place that's like that, but um, Smashwords isn't updating it, despite the fact that we've done it. So I just put up the full Namaste. And so now there's two, and it confuses the shit out of people. And the reason that Namaste on Amazon is called Namaste colon the whole story or the full story is because it was price matching against the free episode on fucking Apple. <laughs> so we, we, we had to change the name on Amazon on Amazon so it wouldn't price match. And so there's so many loose ends here. Like I, I've taken it off now of Smashwords to go to Apple, and I'm hoping that In that will update. And then I'll... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I don't. I, it right now it's confusing. And then I want to change the name on Amazon. But but I think confusion is your enemy right there. I agree. Um, Me too. Hold on just a second here. Uh, somebody say something. Something. <laughs> Should I say it sexy? Hey, if if y'all yeah. want to hear how I injured my eye this week, stay tuned for Better Off Undead. <laughs> oh, and and if you guys, for anybody. We mentioned the, the the summit, the Story World Summit in Austin in September. Anybody who's going to that, watch Better Off Undead episode, I don't remember, 78 or something, called Rules for Meeting Dave, because you'll need <laughs> to know that. You'll need to know the rules for meeting Dave, because if you meet him wrong, you're really going to be in trouble. I've, I've briefed my family already. We had a, we had a webinar about it. <laughs> I've, my kids asked for Dave's stories yesterday, because that's become the thing, and so I gave them the clean version of of your doctor's visit, and I, I prepped them that there will be more Dave stories because you got an eye thing now. So we're just moving next week. It'll be the tongue. What's left? You got ear, eyes. Right. Colon. I want to I get to the colon. You can tell I'm getting old because every fucking show is going to be about my health. Good God. <laughs> like those old people that just talk about you know hilarious? Health. Number 104, get off Dave's lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing is uh, last week he said, what? I'm never sick. And and I swear, Dave is sick more than like everyone I know put together. <laughs> Fuck you. I didn't <laughs> see that. Did you, did you see the pie chart that I did last time of times that Dave is sick versus times Dave is well? <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> I did. Oh, I fantastic. Did. Awesome. Bastards. Uh, all right. Stuff. Well, uh, before before we begin, um, let's let's in an unvarnished way talk about 99 Designs, who is our podcast sponsor. I have no clever way to do that uh, this time. So um, this is the, already. This is what do you say? You don't have a jingle ready. <laughs> I don't have a jingle. Well, I I do have that. Should I should I play that? Hold on a second. I can do that. Uh, it's not really a jingle. All right. The whole production. Here we go. All right. And now, incredibly horrible, deprecating, embarrassing, but memorable ad read, only from our hosts Johnny and Dave, because Sean always screws it up. Take it away, boys. And the more that. 99 Designs does with us, the more we're going to take this all as tacit approval. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you guys have hung in with us through the, the, the through Stephanie making us this little intro. I love it. Um, Their ad but, person uh, just got fired. <laughs> yeah, they just got fired. Uh, but if, um, I mean, if a lot of people do ask us about design, uh, about covers. And one of the things that we said in Write, Publish, Repeat, what, okay, so Sean muted his mic because he always interrupts. I was like, Sean's muted. <laughs> Uh, people asked us in write or in, in write publisher P. We said don't make your own cover, and that's advice that Dave has repeated. And when we talked to Jason Gurley a few episodes ago, uh, I think we started out by saying, "Hey, Jason, what can we learn about cover design?" And then we basically said, "But don't actually make your own cover," and switched it to, "How do you find a designer?" 
And uh, our stock advice, I saw one um, just recently, like Sean replied to somebody. And if, if you don't have like a specific person that you already know, you already want to use them, 99designs is sort of our first stop recommendation. We've used them. And um, <clears throat> you do a little contest. You give them your, what do you, you, what do, you do, Dave? You give them a, a bit of copy you, and like a description you, you, you of what you give, think you want. Uh, yeah, you, you tell them what the book is about, uh, and you give like a, I, I forgot what the hell they call it now. This is great. But basically, you, you write out, you know, what, what you're thinking for the book, what you think it, you, you want on the cover, some ideas, and you throw them out there. And then a bunch of people get together, not get together, a bunch of people compete, uh, and, and they come up with their ideas. They, they get together. Look at Sean interrupting. <laughs> Mute him. So people people will come up with their ideas, and then you look and you decide, you know, which ones you'd like to take to the next round. There's a couple rounds to this, and from there, you you can have um, your readers like help you decide which covers you like most, and then you can have the uh, people that do the designs uh, refine them, make them a little bit better, uh, closer to what you want. And we we've done it for a few books. Uh, Dark Crossings was a beautiful cover. And uh, that one came together very quickly. You know, I was worried about Dark Crossings because it was some. I do most of our covers. I couldn't do it. I couldn't find a stock photo that I could manipulate well enough that I was skilled enough to do. Anything I tried looked very cheesy. And, and I know enough about, you know, I know my limitations. I, don't, I think a lot of people probably don't. Um, so know your limitations and know what you can't do. And what you can't do find someone who can do it. So I was afraid that people wouldn't be able to come up with a great cover for Dark Crossings. And we had like several covers that any one of them would have looked great in a store on a bookshelf. It was beautiful. We had a hard time choosing. We actually let our readers choose. And when the readers choose, they become part of the process. They be, they, they become part of it and they, they want they want to see that book and they want to see it do well. So it's very good. And... Um, you know, the best part is if, if for some reason nobody comes up with a design you like, you, you don't have to pay. You lose absolutely nothing. So uh, what I want to see is um, if anybody has, like once 99 Red Balloons becomes public domain, I'd like to see them make a cover for that because it would be very, very meta. So uh, anyway, start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and you'll get a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. A power pack upgrade gives you more designer time and attention, so you get nearly twice as many designs. 99designs.com slash SPP. That's the decoy ad read that we throw out so that we look like we're not totally unprofessional uh, every once in a while. It's kind of like we know when the cameras are watching us, that sort of thing. I want to submit Sean's face for 99designs remodel on the beard. <laughs> Let's see what we can get. I love going. how disappointed you are at the beard. Have we? Have, has Carl weighed in <laughs> on uh, the beard because he's a beard authority? Uh, he's the one that pointed out. I think he's the one that pointed out that Sean looked like hell in the video. Like, like he just like. Oh, no, leave it to Carl to. I can't believe Carl <laughs> said that somebody looked like hell or anything. Well, I, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Was he the well, first it, to do it? <laughs> it's not a flattering look. Let, let's be clear. I think he looked sexy. It takes away from the nose. It really does. Well, that's that's good. That's, that's, that's a plus. Every time I look at, by the way, while we're waiting, uh, I just invited Chris Garrett, so so we'll we'll see when Chris pops in. But um, I can't look at the new Better Off Undead art. Go to Better. Actually, don't do this. But also, if you want to look at it, do do this. Betteroffundeadshow.com and look at the new art that the Dave made. <laughs> the expression on the Dave is fantastic. All right, so uh, Chris is <laughs> Chris is dramatic. here. Chris, Chris Garrett rocking the uh, the actual lower third makes me want to do that. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good. Can you hear me? Okay, I've, I haven't done hangouts for quite a while, so. Wait, wait. You didn't tell me he was British. Did, did Ooh. I not, <laughs> did, did I not? Do you, do you want to? Um, I see Chris is wearing the hat. Do you, do you, can you see my pen here? It's not coming into focus. It's a real. Pen. He's it rocking. It yeah, well, whatever. It was either it could be that or that, but we're not in the playoffs, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've even got the mic with the uh, spit guard on I know. it. I, I don't feel, I feel like not a pro at all. I Inadequate. I, I totally do. <laughs> I, I need to adjust quickly. So, uh, Chris, what, what do you, you, your accolades shift constantly. Is, is it best to uh, associate you with ChrisG.com, with uh, with ProBlogger, with CopyBlogger, like what, what's your official best place now? 
Uh, officially, probably copy blogger. If you want to actually get my stuff, chrisg.com. But I'm a wannabe writer. That's that's why I'm here. I, I want to <laughs> learn from you guys. I want to write stories. You are writing stories, um, which is fantastic. Yeah, you jumped in with both feet, which is really, yeah. really awesome. Like you, you're you, you're thoroughly getting it. Oh, this is it. You just you got to do it. And um, yeah. I think that you've identified the one thing, which is standing in place, is what ruins a writer from being a writer. Right? Yeah. You just go. Yeah. Analysis paralysis. That's my big problem. I've done seven thousand words of preparation, and then seven thousand words of story. I'd, Nearly got a whole story if I'd have just started writing. I think. <laughs> Wait till right. you're editing. <laughs> so yeah. what, what, what's, I haven't what's even read it. You haven't you haven't read it at all. You've just been sp spooling. I've it just off. been yeah spewing it out. I've I I thought hmm, I'm following your your book procedure. The uh, write, publish, repeat. So I'm just writing brain dump to the keyboard and hoping that it's not absolute crap. Oh, it will be, but that's okay because you fix it next time. <laughs> like it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you, you have to like. I think that's the more important takeaway is to give yourself permission to suck. Like it's it's okay yeah. because, like it, especially in the beginning, it's just gonna be bad, and 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 that's okay because that's how you get better. You know, watch yourself. I've like one word. <laughs> I saw awesome. one you word. The right one. <laughs> Autocorrect had changed nerdiness into neediness, and uh, I thought it was quite appropriate, but I'd better change it. So that's the only word I've changed. It's the only word I've noticed. That's so weird. Whenever I write love in any of our books, my autocorrect changes it to hate. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating how that occurs? Is that when you say, I love you all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you mean, I hate you all? The little paper clip comes up with angry eyebrows. <laughs> it looks like you're writing a hate mail. Would you like help? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, what's the best way to begin this this uh, this this discussion? You guys have sort of this is uh, probably not it. This is probably <laughs> you're on the SPP. This is this is how we roll on the SPP. I'm not on the undead one. Uh, okay. No, you, you no. <laughs> no, 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 but no, but you 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 totally could be. <laughs> you want to ruin your reputation overnight. <laughs> right. I'm writing fiction. I think my reputation's ruined already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're one of us now. <laughs> Nobody's um, ready. Yeah, why don't, uh, do you, I try to um I try to, to to tell everyone a little bit about Rainmaker earlier, but I'm I'm sure I didn't do a very good job. Uh, do you want to talk about what Rainmaker is so everyone can understand why we're using it for pretty much everything going forward. Okay. Uh, well, the, the founders of the company looked around and they couldn't find what they really needed, what they wanted. And it's just copy obviously, blogger. Copy blogger, yeah. So WordPress is fantastic, but needed all these other things. And nothing out there really worked. Or you had to use like Band-Aid duct tape solutions to put everything together. And so we're building what we needed. And last year, we basically did our own dog food, um, ate, ate our own dog food. We put out the My Copy Blogger and Authority Courses. So the platform that you guys are using, what Fiction on Box is on, is basically the new version of what we had to build for ourselves. And <laughs> so, you know, we, we've done very nicely with it, thank you. And uh, I think Fiction on Box is doing very well. Uh, Actually, no, you're doing very well because I can see your stats. Um, and so that's <laughs> that's uh, really pleasing to me. Uh, but also, you know, it's a really cool platform, and it's only going to get better. I mean, we're still in pilot right now. Yeah, I love the I love the the giddy enthusiasm. Um, uh, uh, Robert, when I when I uh, was two weeks, three weeks, like a month ago, um, he was just so animated talking about it, and I love that kind of excitement. And, and I also love that, that, that whole, we built this for us, and so we know it works, and now you know, we, we will sell it as, as something that other people can use. I, I think yeah. that that is the best kind of development. Yeah, I mean, we're getting great feedback, don't get me wrong, but we built it for us first, and uh, it's, it's kind of like you say about art, you have to write the books that you want to read. I think you have to mm -hmm. build the tools sometimes that you want to use. If you're your own best customer, you're not going to go too far wrong. So I'm using it personally as well for my uh, wannabe fiction. Uh, now, now for, 
for people that are unfamiliar with it or Fiction Unbox or even Copy Blogger, uh, or what WordPress are, maybe, or or WordPress or or <laughs> blogs. In uh, <laughs> what, what what are some of the things uh, that that it does, uh, and and why are they helpful? And I, and I also do want to talk about stuff that authors that aren't using Rainmaker can do okay. also for their platform. Yeah, I was well, actually going to go there right away and just say, um, what, I mean, because because Rainmaker is a solution, and I think yeah. that all of us, even Chris, at the risk of being uh, kicked in the nuts by Brian Clark, would probably agree that it's not for. I everybody. will be anyway. <laughs> right, it, that's <laughs> just for being around the, the office, right? Like if he's going to get up there. Oh, um, so so uh, in addition to being. British, Dave. Uh, Chris lives in Canada, so another of Dave's favorites. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm in love now. So if, if Brian <laughs> can get up there, um, at the risk of all of that, I mean, it's it, it. I think it's a solution to a large set of uh, of problems or challenges or just a need that authors Wait. have. And so what? Oh, well, Rainmaker is a Rainmaker is a solution, but Rainmaker is best practices, right? Yeah, that's so probably it's it's about version. conversion. It's Right. So, so, so if we think of it as best practices, yes, Rainmaker offers these solutions, but they're all things that authors want to have on their website, no matter if they're getting them from a plugin or not. Yeah. The idea is you, you, you want these same elements. So by talking about the elements, we're, we're, that's, that's what we want to Yeah, inform, But I you think. might not necessarily want to get this straight away. If you've got one book that's selling 99 cents a copy, maybe you're not ready for the full thing, but they're definitely... Definite things you want to be doing. I mean, I look at Hugh Howey, and he's fantastically successful, but, you know, it's kind of arrogant of me, but I can see things that I'd do differently if I was him. Sure. And, Ooh. Well, you're a conversion <laughs> guy. You're a business right, right. guy. Right. Who is an that's author first. Not that's, 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 that's not a dick. 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 I, I think Hugh would probably agree with that. Hold like, on, let me tweet. Right. author has nothing to teach me. <laughs> but the thing is that he is actually doing so well that he probably doesn't need to. I mean, it, you know, he's got a movie deal and he's he makes got a fantastic a month, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So and I don't. So there is that. It, it, it's a joke with one of his videos. <laughs> well, so what yeah. are the things that authors should be doing? Right. So the first thing is building a list. And my worry with a lot of people who are doing well on Amazon is they're relying on Amazon the same way as people used to rely on Google or Google AdSense or YouTube or Facebook. Or GeoCities. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go way back. <laughs> Friendster. <laughs> uh, and the problem is they can change the rules, and they have done. Uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the select or whatever, the free, all of a sudden your book wasn't in the same uh, top, 100 list because they changed the rules on that and they can change the commission structure so you gain 70% right now you can end up with 30%. Amazon can change a lot of things but Amazon is a fantastic search engine for books, it's a fantastic source of income, uh, source of visibility. Use it as a lead generator. So if I look at Hugh Howey again, one of the reasons why Wall was so successful is because he had a bunch of books already and he had a small fan base that was ready for his next book and they bought wool and it got into some lists and then more people saw it, more reviews and it was fantastic and it looked like an overnight success but it clearly wasn't because he'd been writing for years and his writing was good and he was doing the right things. So if you think about having uh, books in various categories so you've got the visibility don't just end there. Have people go from the books that they buy or the f books they get for free and join your list. That's the, the biggest thing to do. And that can be a, a, a prospect list or it can be a customer list. One of the things we did with my uh, collaboration with Darren Rouse, the pro blogger book, is we have call to actions all through it to go to a free membership site, which is bonus material to the the book. So it's a non-fiction book, but you can do the same. If you think about DVD extras, if you think about um, behind the scenes, you can send people to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a fantasy author, so I'm going to have maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sean, you're and, and, because we've used the uh, the behind the, the the DVD extras metaphor before, exactly. Yeah, I think it's perfect. That's exactly what you should be doing with your blog and your content for for fiction authors. For fiction authors that really well, nonfiction too. Bonus, bonus stuff works. You just have to give 
a reason, um, and and I think that that's I think a reason and follow through are two of the of the biggest things um, that that a lot of authors do wrong is giving making sure that that first communication is good enough. Like the thing I'm offering you is good enough, and then my follow through is good enough. My, I I keep my promise to you on a regular basis. You know what to expect, and that's a hard thing to do. And I think it's where a lot of us mess up. Yeah. Have you talked about autoresponder sequences before? Um, Some, yes, but, but not in a lot of detail. So one of the things that a lot of people do as well is they they do start a list and then they don't send anything to that list or what they send to the list is just promotions for the next book and people go away or they tune you out or they put your stuff into a folder and they never see it again or they mark you as spam. I had that on my own blog. I hadn't written since last August. And so the first email they got was, I never signed up to this. Who are you? And obviously, you have to click a confirmation link and stuff. But I had not written to them for so long. I wasn't nurturing that list. So it was a stale list. It was basically, I was paying Aweb and my email service for nothing. And so you've got to nurture your list. And so having material that drips out over time is a way of doing that. So you could take 2,000 word segments and drip them out. Or you could, like, 400 words. It's just something to keep them interested, keep them around and then when you have got a book to put out then you've got a ready-made audience you don't even have to sell it on Amazon at that point because they just want to buy it so you don't have the Amazon Commission you don't have to worry about uh, any rules that Amazon makes and you could even say this is a pre-release and um, please tell me what you think I'll incorporate your feedback and then you've got some reviews or reviewers ready to go when you do put it on Amazon now, what 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 sort of um, autoresponder content are you talking about? Like, would, would it would have to be something new, something people haven't read because if they've read all your books and stuff, they don't want an email every week with or every few weeks with something they already read. Then they'll tune you out again. Yeah, it depends on the genre. I mean, for fantasy and science fiction, you've got a lot more flexibility because you've created a brand new world, or you've you've got a new slant on the, the real world, like uh, Blunderbuss uh, in the fiction on Boxed. Um, you've got all of that stuff that you've put into your, your character profiles, your locations. Obviously, you've got to be careful if you've used real pictures. You've got to use stock photos or maybe create some. But that's all background material that your fans actually would want. If you think of Terry Pratchett, I've bought his non-fiction books about his world, his disc world. I bought his maps. I had one as a poster that my <laughs> wife won't let me put up, but I did buy it. <laughs> so. A true geek. Awesome. Oh, yes. yes. Too bad Carl's not watching live. He'd be, uh, he'd be in the comments immediately. What, um... This is my, uh... <laughs> desk Love it. Oh, what, I want what, are one some, of those. what are some things that we can learn about, about uh, conversion, because uh, I mean, we, we talk a lot about calls to action in this, and, and so currently in the back of uh, Realm and Sans books, at least, we have, um, you know, get eight free books, which is our starter library uh, for joining the list, or in the case of a follow-up, then we have, you know, a sequel or something like that. Um, but, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, data on the conversion rates. We don't know things we could do to, to tweak conversion and get more out of those calls to action. Any thoughts from uh, sort of Rainmaker best practices or things that you know that we could do in general? So there's a couple of things. One is almost using your books like a split test. So if you've got Kobo, you've got Apple, and you've got Amazon, you could have a different call to action in each and see which succeeds. And the way you can do that is either using a coupon code you know, give a discount. If you actually want to sell something at the back of the book, you could do that. Otherwise, you just use a different landing page, and Google Analytics allows you to have a tag or whatever on the page. But just knowing which call to action works best uh, will allow you to improve and what caught people's eye, what was the benefit or the, the hook that got people to actually take action. One of the things that I see people do a lot and it's it's a shame they have like a 256 word call to action <laughs> and you have to type this thing with slashes and hyphens and you know you have to find on your keyboard where that character lives 
and people just aren't going to do that. And I know some people are worried that, oh, they're going to go to the library, they're not even going to pay for the book, or they're going to be in the bookstore. Those still exist, right? They're going to go to the bookstore and, you know, they're going to type it in. But I would much more focus on the good and honest fans because they're the ones that you want to attract more of than worried about. Right. You can't those. be scarce, right? If Because a scarcity mentality like that, it stops you from doing the right thing because you're afraid of the wrong thing happening. Yeah. And also, I'd for anybody that's going to pirate your book or do something like that, they were never going to buy it anyway. It's not a lost sale, but it's another person who could potentially tell somebody else. I mean, uh, one of the things that Hugh Harry does, I keep coming back to him, but he's a hero. Um, he has a, you know, if you pirated a book, then pay me some money button on his, his page. I don't know what he <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I wonder if anyone ever clicks it. I should hope so. <laughs> but again, if he gives an incentive, is that, you know, get all the extras, then they've got a reason to. Okay, make, your, a... make yourself right with God. Click this button. <laughs> Yeah. We, we do have a question from uh, Damon Carpenter. A question for Chris and the guys. What's the best resource out there for writers who are new to blogging slash websites and need to learn basic SEO and related tips to increase visibility? What websites, books, or tutorials do you recommend? Uh, copy blogger right now we've got a whole bunch of free ebooks, but I would not focus on SEO, especially if you're a fiction writer. Don't yeah. focus on SEO. It changes yeah. too yeah. much, right? Well, also, well, if you're well, a fiction writer... You know, like yeah. if you you write a book about that that's a good coming of age book, what I mean, what do you search for? Like it's yeah, too it's hard, too vague. Yeah, nonfiction is easier because you're people are looking for very specific answers to very specific yeah. questions. So yeah. SEO for nonfiction is totally different, but for fiction, like we've been fighting that forever. <laughs> it, well, it's, Damon it's, didn't say if he was fiction or nonfiction. So yeah, well, if he's nonfiction, well, I, then SEO. Um, but even then, I wouldn't focus on SEO. I'd focus on really pleasing each individual reader. And don't think of search engines. Think of answer engines. You need to be the answer that comes up for their question in Google. And also YouTube. Um, people use YouTube to find answers as well. So actually, you know, the, the way you are doing this podcast as a, a hangout is a brilliant idea. And then turning it into MP3s. If you can then create transcripts, then you've got another way of being found. But I would focus on being the best answer or understanding the problem the best rather than focusing on SEO. SEO is uh, it's a side effect of doing good work rather than something to focus on. Something yeah, I see... I, I, uh, something I see a lot of popular YouTubers do, because uh, I watch like gaming videos and stuff, uh, a lot of the ones that are doing very well for themselves and making a ton of money, uh, like, say, Call of Duty videos, they'll, they'll put in, like, Call of Duty or COD in the search bar, and then, you know, stuff will auto-populate that. And then they'll have ideas on what to make videos for. Uh, you can do the same thing with Google, and then you could, like, you could put in, like, a, a search term, like, just say SEO, uh, some kind of question, and just see what people are asking, and then you could write articles or do videos around that stuff, right? Okay. Yeah, one of the things that you can do when you're talking about people asking, once you've got a small seed audience, really get to know them and find out what the challenges are, what's keeping them up at night and what they want to achieve. And that's what you write about, what's, that's what you create content about. But with fiction, uh, I'm, I'm writing a story that's a cross between superheroes and wizards. Nobody puts into Google, I want a story about superheroes <laughs> and wizards. Carl did. <laughs> Yeah, the world. I don't is want to know Carl's search history. Um, <laughs> so, 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 Chris, one of the things that we're again, I don't, I don't even mean to make this Rainmaker centric. This is again lessons to be learned. But one of the things that we're using Rainmaker for is we like the idea of doing direct sales. We've been intrigued with this concept for a while, and I'm just curious if um, y what you think about the idea of direct sales of books and book bundles and uh, not as a, a replacement for places like Amazon, but as a supplementary source. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things you can do that Amazon and Kindle can't. I mean, we talked about video earlier. We talked about having maps and um, having all that kind of thing. So that you can make the package more appealing and you've got infinite bundling capabilities. I mean, one of the things that you can do, which you can't really do as easy on Kindle, is you can test bundles. You can test packages. So you could have a, a collaboration between 
15 different authors as an anthology, see if it works. It could be a one-off, it could be a limited edition. Uh, you can do book signing. You could sign a book and then you can send it out in the post. Uh, all of those things. But one of the things that I am really intrigued by the idea of, and I haven't tried it yet, is having a HBO slash Netflix slash iTunes like subscription. If somebody really gets into your world, if somebody really gets into your um, your story and your, your serial, then just have it two dollars ninety nine a month and see how it goes. Yeah, it's something talked, to we, try. Yeah, that's exactly. I think we toyed with that idea. <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely. I've I've loved the subscription model for what we're doing forever. Um, and and it's not just. I I love the continuity. I love the subscription. But I also love that you you can flat out offer stuff to your fans that you couldn't otherwise. So if we wanted to do a a big giant collective inkwell box for someone new to us and we only wanted to charge $30 for all of our books in a big giant bundle, we couldn't sell that on Amazon because they, you know, we'd only get $10 for it and that somehow doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. So, but on your own site, you you can give more value to the reader and make more money for yourself and that's awesome. Yeah. And you can even as a one-off payment, you can have the membership model cuz they can have the original downloads, they can have a deluxe premium download, uh, and then all the extras, and then because they're going into the site, then you can have call to actions for other stuff. And because you know what they've already purchased, you can say you might also like, or people who bought this also bought, and you could say, well, you can buy all three the same way as Amazon does, except you're not paying Amazon any money. So it, it it's, right. your, it's your thing, you can control it. and. Um, I mean, you, you can get there without having a full membership site. Just use something like eJunkie or even PayPal. But once you've got that capability, the, there's a lot more options open to you. I'd like to try as well the Humble Bundle idea, which is pay whatever you want, but if you pay more, the average, more than the average, you get some bonuses. Um, we'd have to build that code, but I'd really like to try that and see how it works. Now, now I have a question regarding blogs in general and this is something I've I've wondered for a long time and now I can ask an expert what is better okay specifically for authors what is better for a home page is it something that is a blog with something on the side which shows your newest stuff or more of a um, like a magazine type theme where there's no blog you have to click separately for the blog on my blog, because uh, you know it's nonfiction, I have the biggest thing is a call to action to join the list uh, of headlines on the side, and then I've got a little bit about me. On a fiction blog, I would probably do something similar, but I don't think the headlines is going to be as important. I would show uh, some book covers, and the call to action as the giveaway would be there would be a big book cover or three. Um, now, one of the things that I've noticed with my own blog, which I wouldn't want to happen to anybody else, is uh, tons of unsubscribes saying, thank you, I've got the ebooks, I'm unsubscribing now, that's all I wanted. So you need to actually <laughs> say, this is what you're going to get in the future, as well as <laughs> the immediate gratification of, get my free stuff, you want to have something that says, and you also get regular... I, I I would add to that too. I, I think that an immediate because if somebody is just giving you their email address, that's a really big deal. That's really awesome. Like that, that could be the start of them being a lifetime reader of, of your work. You really want that first impression to be as as good as it could possibly be, and that's your first chance to over deliver. So let's say you you promise them one free book, give them two. You know, like follow it up with a free short story or something that you wrote. That it's that and that or or give them exactly what they wanted uh, right then and then two days later. Here, this is just because. Like, stop. Don't try to sell them anything. Just be as cool as you possibly can be. Yeah. But like as I said soon... before, you could have a full book and then you could have uh, serialized your chapters and segments of another book that drips over time. And then they've got some immediate gratification and they've also got something to look forward to. Yeah, I think that this is um, a good place for autoresponders too. And, and we've... We, we already were devotees of the autoresponder um, model. I once asked uh, Sonia Simone what she thought was the best tool for somebody to have, and she said autoresponder is her favorite. And so when, when we had Tim Grawl on a while ago, it, I sort of got renewed on that. And then Unboxed happened, and it was just like, 
you know, like <laughs> nothing shall survive. And um, but we need to get back to that because I think that I'm I'm really enamored of the idea of. Um, t- taking people on a tour, not even just keeping them engaged, that there's that, but almost taking them on a tour of your stuff. And it, Sean, have you put up any of the autoresponders or no? Like we had a few. Oh no, no, there's four in a draft, and I want to get like at least twenty written before we launch it, so they're they're in sequence. But that's exactly why we didn't launch it because we knew Unbox was coming, and there's no way we could maintain. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I love love um, intelligent autoresponder sequences. I think they they have a rhythm that's almost like good fiction because there are so many you know open loops in it and and you really want people to read the next email so you give them a reason to and that's what you do in good fiction. It's always giving them a reason to keep reading and yeah, I, 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 gotta, I like them. I go back to the question I asked um, I, 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 if, you, if you answered I might have missed it. So is it, is it better to have the blog on a separate page for a fiction author? Is that I would you? Yes, um, because if they're going to um, land on an article, they're going to have used a direct link. Otherwise, they're checking you out. They're trying to find who you are and what you do and why they should be interested. So the home page should really tell people, this is where you are, this is why you should care, this is what to do next. And I think for a fiction author, um, showing rather than telling, uh, as we always, you know, we beat that drum quite a lot, but it's really important. People do judge books by the covers, so they judge you by your covers as well. So if you say you're an author, show the books that you've written or you know your forthcoming work. And it's a good place to say this is the latest one, this is how to find out about the others. And then below you could have this is my latest uh, headlines. I mean, on the Copy Blogger homepage, I think we've got a video, we've got the tools that we create, and then we've got the headlines. It's the, you know, we're a blog about writing. But yeah. It's the last thing. Yeah, I think the, I think the 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 homepage should tell your story as quickly as possible. Yeah. yeah as it's a, not 15 I, seconds. A, as a reader seconds. of Copy Blogger, I actually like Copy Blogger before when it was the blog post on the front page. I, I see why it makes sense, but as a regular reader, for, for first time people, I think that makes sense. But for a regular reader, to me, I I want to see the blog first. I don't know, maybe. Maybe you just bookmark the blog. But a copy blogger knows that you will click through to the blog. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, and regular readers, they're following us in their inbox, in uh, Facebook, they're following it in Twitter, Google+. People don't tend to go to the homepage to get our latest article. Um, well, you I, know I would like to. <laughs> I would like to offer a brief summary and see what you guys think of this, but um, I would say that for the first, the, the author who doesn't yet have a platform or has a very uh, small one, it feels like the minimum you want is a place for people to go, sort of discover you, and, and join your list. Like, that would be the goal. Yeah. And But for us, and, and this is something that Sean is working on a ton with a real cock tease of a site that I'm we can't see it yet because there's nothing, but he'll say, I just did all this stuff and <laughs> we don't get to see it for another three weeks. So I, it's no, under I wrote wraps, a 6,000 word, a six, a 6, word blog post today, but it's just copy. There's nothing, it's not, there's nothing there but Right, and I get it, but I want to see it. But anyway, the point is, I, I think that I think that the, the, the grail for, for, for me anyway, the way I'm looking at this is, at this point, we're, we're we're devoting, like we're getting email addresses. Cool. What I want to do is use um, sites like Amazon and Kobo. I, I want those to be like some people are only going to shop in those places. Fine, whatever. But I would say the the real like if I could have one wish is to take somebody and and move them into our space where they're buying from us. They're 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 sort of a captive audience of us, and we're no longer dependent on these external sites for that individual person. Yeah. Right. So and, last year, our, our CTAs were individual to each book. So Amazon books go to Amazon, but but I think we're converting to where everything's going to go to our home site because we want to move readers into our space, our environment, so we can nurture the relationship better. But have a landing page that's for that that book and that call to action. So um, Unicorn Western should link to a Unicorn Western landing page that says "Thank you for clicking through from," because you, you want to track that, but also, um, okay, user experience, uh, you need to give the feedback that they're on the right path. So you say, this is what's going to happen, and then you confirm, this. you did the right thing, well done, you're in the right place. And you need to give that feedback. Uh, so you should show that 
you came from there and you should also tell them that they came from there and you should say this is what I promised you as promised here is that's great advice I love that that Thank sounds you. like 15 That's awesome. different landing pages per book. Yeah. Oh, God. No, it's well, one well, per Couldn't book. you have one? Right. Couldn't what, you have how, one? So Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, Apple. Couldn't all of those book versions of Unicorn Western link to a single page, which yes, maybe then links, to the yeah. manga, then links to a direct buy link if we, we want to yeah. do it that way? Yeah. Right. But you could still use a tracking um, element to it. I mean... the. The first thing is to just have the landing page and then work from there. You don't have to do everything at once. Just do it incrementally. But, you know, the fancier you get, the more data you'll have. But also, not everybody's got your book sales. You know, I haven't sold a single book yet, so there's no point in me getting t super fancy. I just need the foundations. So, now, okay, so... Go, I, I was say, okay. One of the concerns that I think a lot of people have... Uh, if If you become very popular and you're selling a lot of books from your website... Um, that takes away from books that you're selling on Amazon. And you do need your initial readers, people that are waiting for your book, to help push the book for early book sales so your book will climb higher in the charts and remain visible longer. Right. If people are buying just from you and suddenly you know, a lot of people aren't finding you on Amazon because your own readers aren't helping that book get noticed, that not that an issue? Yeah, that's what I was saying about having um, your readers go over to Amazon to leave reviews and using it as a lead generator. You know, the first book anybody experiences of yours is probably going to come from Amazon uh, for quite a while. So you're still still using Amazon. You're still sending people to Amazon. And you might also have an Amazon launch and that's why you would have the customers from Amazon get extras so they become part of your ecosystem but they still purchase at Amazon and still drove up that that league table. It, it is a concern but the the alternative is that you're absolutely married to Amazon and they can just shrug and then you're, you're I would love to have that problem. Like, that feels like the best quality <laughs> problem ever. Everybody's buying from my site. Nobody's buying on Amazon anymore. Right. I would no, it's, that problem, right. it's a scarcity problem because, because here's the thing, dude. You're, it's just that's the bottom of the funnel, right? You're always going to have way less people buying from your site. And if you don't, oh, my God, how rich are you? Like, right? If, you're, if your numbers well, on also, your site are... If it's your site, you can have affiliates and you can pay out commissions to other people. So... One of the best ways to build your platform is for other authors in similar niches to recommend you or review your book. If you can incentivize more of that, more links, more people, then you wouldn't need Amazon because other authors are sending people or people who are fans of the genre or, you know, for a science fiction author, the Battlestar Galactica community might be linking through to you. So the, you have to think about Amazon as being one place to find you or out of many. The, the, the thing that I was going to mention a little while ago is you, you're in a rather unique position, unique position, Chris, of being somebody who knows just a ton about conversion and online marketing and, and, and copywriting and all this stuff, but who hasn't yet sold a book, as you said, like a fiction book. Yeah. And so I've sold non-fiction books, but this is a whole new scary world to me. <laughs> but what's great about that from a learning perspective is I'm curious what you will do or what you are doing as in the shoes of somebody who doesn't have a diverse catalog yet, doesn't have a lot of loose ends, you're just you're just starting in fiction. What would you do? Uh, well, I've already started. I started blogging. I just haven't told anybody about it. I started a, a, my fiction. Now you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I started a, a new blog. Um, and as of yet, I've got two subscribers, myself and somebody I don't know. Um, <laughs> Is it redacted.com? <laughs> no, it's, and there's no decoy, so I don't know. <laughs> you want to uh, give that out here, or what's the website? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Fiction Unbox people might find it because uh, I mentioned it in the accountability thread. But uh, I started writing about my struggles, and I've put um, my completely unrevised first draft uh, out there every time I've done a, a thousand or two words and um, I've linked That's out so to awesome. some... Does your heart beat faster? Are you nervous when you publish it raw like uh, that? 
I am scared to death. Uh, I don't know what's scarier though, that people might hate it or like it. I don't know. <laughs> so like Dave. Dave. <laughs> wow. Uh, we have a question. Helen Martin asks, when adding content to your website and building your platform, where is a good line between giving bonuses for your readers, uh, like maps, etc., and giving too much of the story and characters away, especially if you have yet to publish the first in a series? Well, I wouldn't give spoilers. So, you know, if your character turns into a unicorn, don't say that in the character <laughs> profile. Um, but I think a good example is uh, if you've ever seen Tested.com, which is the website from the Mythbusters guys. They give a lot every day, but they do expanded videos and uh, custom unique videos for the members. And that's a really good balance because you need to attract people in. Uh, it's like if you do a Q&A, you could do 20 minutes of the Q&A just publicly available on YouTube with a call to action, and then you could have the full Q&A unabridged for your members. So just think, if you were a member, what would you like to see? How would you like to be treated? Uh, I would absolutely make people register and maybe even be a customer before they could join your forum, just because the spam issue. You're not going to get spam if people have to pay. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get self-promotion and all that kind of things, but... So, you know, it's not a lot to ask. You, you buy a $3 book, and then you can, you can comment in the forums. So, you know, it's, it's a balance you have to test, and I think every genre will be different. Um, I think in some of the more adult uh, topics, then people might not want to use the real names, for example, and they might want to have content that is less you know, visible that they're consuming it rather than a forum. So you, you have to try different things. Um, uh, I've, th I'll ahead. just say quickly. This is um, this is an issue that that came up over and over again when I was uh, in Johnny 1.0 phase, and um, everything that I have seen personally, and and most of the advice that I've heard from people that I know and respect, like Copy Blogger, sort of says there's you can't give too much away. I mean, you really can't. Like you can, yeah. the more you share, the more people are drawn to you, and so I I wouldn't worry about that at all. Uh, yeah, exactly. A couple of comments here. Mikey Campling says this is really helpful stuff. Garrett Robinson says, Garrett Robinson says, can I be a total self-congratulating cock and mention how I started doing direct sales way back with Mid Realm Plug a year ago, and Sean and Johnny thought it was a terrible idea because you'd lose your Amazon ranking. I'd like to answer that question. Oh, no, God. you may not. You may <laughs> not be that guy. <laughs> Michelle, uh, just for ask. What? Go ahead. No, go go ahead. Michelle Osborne asks, uh, should a new writer set up a blog or website in advance of having any finished work to offer? Uh, those of us just starting their first novel. I did. Uh, yeah, I'll actually answer that and, and go right into what I was going to say, which is, yes, you should. If for no other reason than to get your throat clearing out of the way. Um, blogging is not something you can just start doing and be good at it. You kind of have to understand the dashboard, understand the rhythm, and get into a flow. Blogging can be super easy if you if you get it to a place where it's on autopilot and, and okay now I spend 20 minutes doing this and um, and I think that's important that routine and if you wait until you have a bunch of stuff to say uh, you're not giving yourself the credit now that you do know and and what I was going to say this goes back to a, an earlier question about where can I learn all of this if I'm brand new and I don't have a blog. Really, I think one of the the dangers is hopping around online trying to learn a lot of stuff because there's so much out there you don't know who's right and who's wrong and and it's it's good if you can latch on to kind of a a, um, a voice that you trust and um, you know to further sing copy bloggers praises uh, they're the way they present information really is um, in part responsible for the way I do business online the way I understand business online and the way I articulate myself online and you can really just get lost in their archives, and you'll be serving yourself well. You know, go look at their most popular articles. Um, again, like Chris said, I don't think the SEO stuff is is that relevant to almost everyone listening to this, unless you're in like a really highly competitive keyword-driven field. Um, but but the best practices stuff there about writing headlines and organizing your content and speaking to your reader, all of that is just fantastic stuff. And if you just you know, went through like a crash course on Copyblogger, you would be doing yourself a favor if you're serious about blogging. Yeah, I actually wrote an article for Copyblogger about what to give away and what to sell. And basically, just 
open a vein, leave it all out there, and you'll get fans. And that's the main thing. It's it's you don't want that lukewarm. I barely know this person. You either want love or hate, because mm-hmm. otherwise they don't take take action. They don't remember you. And what's the saying? People remember how you made them feel. They don't remember what you did or said. And um, I think that's super important when you're trying to grow a fan base. Because this is art. It's not necessarily a super scientific thing because we're dealing with people and people's desires and wants and needs. So just try and please people as best as you can without settling out completely. And when you're doing the blogging, write for future you as much as your audience. So oh, if you I love that advice. Dave, don't write for future you. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be a future you if he keeps injuring himself. <laughs> uh, what, one of the one of the things I think a lot of writers struggle with, and I don't know what the right answer to this is, is uh, what to blog about. Uh, do you blog about writing? So many people are already writing about writing. Uh, do you jump into that that pool, um, or do you write about something like if you're into sci-fi? Do you write about you know your favorite sci-fi movies or something? I think Carl Sinclair does a pretty good job with this, where he uh, he writes about like geeky stuff, which like you know, World of Warcraft, like anything he's interested in. And this is before he's even got his first book out. And the, the, the people that would be his target audience are finding him that way. He, yeah. he does write about writing a little bit on a different, like self-publishing roundtable and stuff. That's a different audience altogether. Uh, but he's going after the interests of the people that would most likely read his book. Do you think that is the best way to go? Yeah. I think um, I, I once had this question at a conference. Somebody said... I. I sell backpacks for hikers. Um, there's only so many things I can write about straps and camouflage. <laughs> and so I said, write for the audience who is likely to buy those things, who is it going to be interested in those things. So outdoors gives you a whole, literally a whole world uh, to start writing about. And it's the same with, uh, with my genre. I'm going to start off with superheroes and geek topics like wizards and, you know, it's a urban fantasy. There's tons of things I can write about that would be of interest to those people. The latest Marvel film, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, or I can write about TV, I can write about what's happening in the world of fantasy, I can review books, because if they're, if I want people that are interested in reading, then reviewing books is going to be a good place to start. But I think, do write about writing, but not necessarily in a uh, Stephen King on writing sense, but write about the struggles or the thoughts you're having about your writing process. And then if nobody else reads it, you can look back and see how you've developed, the same way as Johnny's doing with Fiction Unboxed. Yeah, I... I, I th- Go ahead, Dave. In, in relation to that, I was going to say, uh, one, one of the things I like, and, and I don't even know if uh, Moleskine or Moleskine, I don't even know how the hell you say it. Uh, th- those notebooks, though, the, the, these things. Um, one of the things I like is, I, I don't know if they do it on their blog. They should if they don't, Bo. Uh, but there is a community of people that are around it, and they share their journals and stuff, and they like talk about different ways to like use the journals and different ways to plan and stuff. And, and that is something that is, is really cool, and that kind of reminded me of your backpack thing. Like If you talk about the, the lifestyle associated with your target audience, uh, things that you know people want to read about. I like reading about. I like seeing how people use their journals as an artist and a writer. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think I mean, you. If you, I you, went to a Warhammer store or whatever it was called, um, you know, or a comic book store, you're in that the world of things that you're passionate about, and just your site or your blog should be the same. It should be a place you can go for the things that you're passionate about. Yeah, I think you want to find that spot where your voice intersects with the interests of your ideal reader. And and if as long as you're in that sweet spot and your ideal reader should be they should have a lot in common with you, right? So, yeah, um, you, you try to make a connection and the things you have in common is how do you do that? But also it you've got a unique voice, but it should always be about them. So use the stories and your anecdotes and what you've seen, what what you're finding exciting as something they should go look at or they should do or they should learn from. Yeah, absolutely. There, there are two very important comments on this here. Uh, um, Monica Lionel says, Haha, I just watched that Better Off Undead episode this week. The problem is Dave is a teddy bear, which means you want to hug him. 
Uh, Michelle <laughs> Osborne says, you. I want to go to the summit just to break the rules of meeting Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, my children are hatching a scheme. <laughs> as we uh, as we wind down, I just um, you guys mentioned whether you should whether or not you should do SEO and what's a good thing for SEO is transcripts, of course. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on who you would use for transcripts? My wife does transcripts. Then no caption access. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is caption. We planned this out but so well in advance. I, I was just about to say though, the the reason why I just said that is she does everybody else's but mine. So <laughs> you should hire caption access. Caption access sounds very good. I will do that. They 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 do, and uh, they also save kittens. So captionaccess.com. They're uh, doing. Uh, Jacob is furiously transcribing fiction on boxed videos, and we're like. Guys, don't forget the hundred episodes of the self-publishing podcast. That's still on your plate too. Like we just basically transcribe the podcast, and you know them, they're superheroes. What you should do as well is take the tra those transcriptions and uh, serialize them in your autoresponder. If there's any choice nuggets. <laughs> oh, there's oh, choice, we nuggets. Have choice right. nuggets. The kind you sweep <laughs> away. Um, Chris, what's the best place to to find slash follow you for the purposes of anybody listening to this? Fiction Unbox in the forum. <laughs> and I like that you have to actually be a member to, to, to follow that advice. I like that, too. That, that uh, keeps that a bunch awesome. of people from emailing them with all these SEO questions and stuff. <laughs> Is that meta? Uh, Is asking people to do that meta? I don't know. It's, 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 um, it's meta, and it's also good salesmanship, which I like. <laughs> so um, I, will, I will go ahead, and, uh, and we'll... We'll wind down, but but thanks for being on, Chris. And if you want to follow Chris's advice on finding him, you can still join Fiction Unboxed now and forever. No matter when you run into this, it's fictionunboxed.com. Uh, forever? It's un never going to end? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, well, no, it's going to end, but it's it's avail it's evergreen. It will not oh, okay. denigrate. <laughs> in its, uh, in its whatever. So thanks for being on, Chris. Thanks uh, for everybody for listening, and we will see you all next week.